Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another video. This is a paid request for Tinny Tay. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting any type of videos, whether it be a topic, reaction, a commentary, a movie review, a re review, something random, like a movie news, or whatever the case may be, playing a video game for an hour or a full playthrough, PayPal is usually the best bet. I do have a Patreon and a Cash app because people have asked about those. And those are also down in the info box, or there, or there, where it's at on YouTube nowadays. And thank you for those who have sent them out. I will get to my as I can. Thank you so much for that. Now, Tinny had an interesting topic. How did I start YouTube? Because he says, I want to know when you started, how things went. Did it take long to get subscribers and comments? Were the comments decent or were they bad people? Sort of an interview of how you experienced your YouTube channels. I think of you as one of the reviewers with an honest look and not like Chris Stubman. Well, obviously Chris Stubman is doing something right because he's been on probably shorter than I have and has a ton more. So obviously I'm doing something wrong, but I still appreciate the, the kind words. <clears throat> I guess the best way to start is... I first found YouTube is around 2006 or so or 2007 honestly looked up Ninja Turtle stuff because I'm a big Ninja Turtle fan I heard that they're gonna make this new movie that came out in 2007 look up info it might have been around 2006 because it was when uh, James Rolfe the angry Nintendo nerd released his video on Ninja Turtles the NES game I'm like oh what's this it popped up in the search and clicked on it oh what's this thing called YouTube and oh okay this guy's doing a review and it's a funny review and I remember this game I liked this game it was an entertaining video and then it's like oh wow Karate Kid and all this stuff uh, amongst this time period and then I was on a forum for Dead Pit, the horror talk radio show with uh, CT and Uncle Bill, which thankfully I've become friends with, so that's very, very cool for that to happen. And I was on their forum listening to their show, and they started doing YouTube videos. I'm like, wow, these seem like fun. On the road, they do certain skits and things of that nature. <laughs> so those were the two that kind of introduced me to YouTube, and then like, there's these video game people like Army 21 and all these guys that would... Army 21 was probably my favorite because he seemed genuinely upset about a game and cursing and like he seemed genuine. I mean, I could do that. I could be honest and be pissed at a movie that's really bad. <coughs> so, I mean, let me review some films I think are bad like Jaws 4. And talk about why I think they're bad. And this is when it was a lot more free on YouTube. <coughs> this is about 2006, 2007. So this is before Google bought it. This is when you could do really anything with footage. You could make a movie review and have the trailers in it. You could have. I would do reviews where every minute or two I would have a clip here and a clip there and show how stupid the ending is. And show why I like this film or hate this film. <coughs> Sorry about that. I know it's annoying. So that was it was the Wild West. It was the Wild West of YouTube. The only drawback is number one, there's no way to make money. That was not a thing back then. Or you were only limited to they said ten minutes, but technically it was ten minutes and fifty nine seconds. So eleven minutes. So if you did a video that was twenty five minutes You'd have to separate the two and upload here's part one and here's part two. But the thing with YouTube back in the day, it was very different than it is today. Like I said, you could do whatever, it seemed like whatever you wanted with footage. And I, sh I should take a step back. When I first started YouTube, I did not do movie reviews. I did tributes, to be fair. When I first started YouTube... It was movie tributes, which were like still pictures. 
I like this movie. I don't find a bunch of still pictures and put a song underneath and there you go. Music video. And well, now I can move the Windows Movie Maker camera to go left to right or up to down or zoom in. Then I taught myself, oh, I could rip footage. I could rip footage from the DVDs I had. And my computer had the DVD ripper. And I would rip the, the footage and edit edit uh, music videos. So I would edit like Rapid Fire to the song I'll Be There. I would edit Ninja Turtle movie videos and Rambo and like all sorts of stuff I would edit. And really that's how I first met some people. That's how I, I think I... It was that, I think it's how I first met Mike, OCP, because he liked some of the videos I did, and then I'm like, man, it'd be nice, you know, then I started making actual reviews, like Jaws 4, and that was, uh, I'm trying to think, the first account was gone because of music copyright, because I posted the soundtrack to Predator, which now you find just like that, but back then the music was getting a bit sketchy, but not the footage, at least yet. And then that was gone, so. Then I had a second channel, and that's when it seemed to gain a bit more momentum. Uh, the guys at Dead Pit, you know, I started doing movie reviews. Uh, a lot of people seem to have found me with the Rambo 2008 review because I saw that from the theater and I talked about how much I love the film. I was just very passionate about it because it was such a great time. And I did a lot of people like, oh, I, my, I think Effrey, my friend, he first saw that review. He said, who's this guy? And then as time went on, I would just pump out a lot of reviews and say, I love this film, I love this film. Oh, I saw this film, it sucks. Like Avatar. I thought Avatar sucked. And then, when I had my second channel, was like my original Rambo 4 review, I took that channel down. I took that channel down because I every review had a ton of footage in it a ton of footage and this is when they're really starting to crack down on that type of stuff and i'm sitting there going first off there's like they're going to sue you which was not the case just using copyright but it was also really me sitting there going sooner or later they're going to take this down because of all the footage Either I could keep going and then, whoop, it's all gone now, or just start anew. And I did. So 2010, I started anew. And that, that was really the real th reason behind it. I don't think I really said that until now. And then from 2010 to now, just really kept at it. And then people say, well, why don't you start like Patreon? Why? Well, other people do it. Okay. Okay, pay requests, okay. And then for some reason people seem to like what I say and support the channel and thanks to you people, I'm here, really. And you're asking like how things went from the get-go? Like I say, it was a whole new ball game. It was a different world until today. Because, I mean, there were still a lot of people, but a lot less people than now. It's kind of like, you know, people talk about conventions, how if you went to a comic book convention, like, there's still a lot of people there, but it was a bit easier easier to breathe. It was a bit easier to breathe, but once people knew that there's a lot of money to be made, and corporations, then the floodgates were open, and everybody, and their mom, and their brother, and their goldfish got on YouTube. And now, it's a lot harder to stick out. Even then, I obviously haven't done that much of a job. Because, you know, yes, I only have 24,000 subscribers. There are people that are around for a year. And they have triple. You know, and obviously, because of who I am. Because of how I do the videos. Very simple like this. Not like a, looking like a TV show. Because I'm very brutally, bluntly honest on stuff. I'm not the most popular guy. 
But at the same time, there was a still a nice community, whether it be the people on Dead Pit and the forums on Dead Pit. You know, being a part of a community like that helped. And a lot of those people were very nice and supportive. The guys at Tip Pip mentioned me. They didn't have to. Just out of the bullet. Wow, they mentioned me? What the hell? Oh, we've been watching this guy's videos and it's pretty cool. I mean, what? Just back then I had like the Halloween 5 rant and the Halloween 2007 rant. And I just went off on that stuff. I was even trying to do like little skits. Which nowadays people don't really do nowadays. People don't really watch that type of stuff. I mean, did it take long to get subscribers? Yeah. I mean, when you see subscribers, it took forever to get 100. I'm like, wow, I got 100 subscribers. Who'd have thought? I got 1,000? Oh, my God. Let alone, like, I got 10,000. I'm like, how the hell did this happen? So, yeah, it does take a long time. And that's the thing is that people go into YouTube thinking it's going to be an overnight sensation and within a month, you know, you don't have like a hundred subscribers. It's not the case. Because there's so many people, there's so many people out there making videos and then they like put all this time and money to make themselves look like a TV show. I think I was lucky enough that I started in 2000, you know, I started with a few channels than this one. And, uh, I was lucky enough, you know, being part of that Dead Pit Forum. Without that, I wouldn't be here. So, I mean, stuff like that where you're outside of stuff on YouTube and say, hey, I got... But at the same time, like, self-promoting, I didn't really do that a whole lot. I did that maybe a little bit where there's, like, a section, oh, I, got, I made stuff too. But you don't want to seem too needy because then people kind of do the opposite. If you seem like, please, please see my stuff, it's like, okay, yeah, and then you... then Because then they're unsure, well, what if I don't like it? What if the blah, blah, I don't want to be honest. If I'm being honest, well, I did in a fight, well, I did in a struggle, well, you get pissed at me. So you never want to be too needy. If you build it, they will come. And it may not be, you know, Chris Tuckman level of success, but, you know, it's still something. And... Yeah, it took a while for subscribers and comments. I mean, even nowadays, I'll do a review of a film and it may get two comments at that. It's just, maybe I'm the wrong guy to ask because I don't think I'm that successful at the YouTube thing. But, uh, time. Luck and time. And determination in terms of you know, I pump up videos and pump out videos. That's, you know, thanks to you guys and the requests. I pump up, like, three videos a day or four videos a day. I mean, one person sees this and, oh, well, I like that one review the guy did. Or maybe I'll check it out. Or, wow, he's done a lot of this. And, hmm. So if ten people, if nine of them don't like me, maybe one of them do. And maybe that one person subscribes and maybe keeps going. Or, oh, well, a hundred people saw it and... Maybe 20 people liked me. Well, that's still 20 people who subscribed. I just... It's... People assume they don't go in here and become successful and become this big YouTuber guy. And when they didn't, within a month or even within a year, they give up. You gotta go into it where... I don't know the secret formula because I obviously haven't found the secret formula. So who am I to give people advice when I haven't even found it? All I can say is, did it take long to get subs and comments? It still is taking long. I mean, I've been on this for 14 years, and I'm at 24,000. There are people that like had got to a million in two years. So, I'm the guy taking the longest way around the block. <laughs> Where the time is decent. At first, yeah, because, you know, they're like, hey, how's it going? And, but even back then, yeah, there's always going to be people that get mad at you. You could be the nicest guy, and they're still mad at you because it's the internet, and they feel that you get away with it. 
because they don't have to show their face, they don't have to show where they live, they don't have to show anything. They, there's no repercussions, there's no punishment. Even if they're blocked, they make another and another and another account. And some people just, stuff's going on in their lives, so they find a way to unleash that. So they go on and they find someone they don't like, or I don't like their opinion. So I could be honest, just America is freedom. Yeah, you have a freedom to be out like a dick. There's also consequences as well. Maybe not legal, no. Maybe YouTube, maybe not, but, you know, karma is a bitch. And just with luck and time and just uploading consistently, if I had quit 10 years ago, or five years ago, I mean, you just keep at it and you just be passionate. People may hate you, but if you're being honest and passionate about it, and you have your own either unique style or be yourself, don't try to be like Chris Stuckman because you just be a, a wannabe or a ripoff. Just be yourself and keep at it. And do it for the fun of it. Because again, it may be a year and you may get five. But maybe those five people become friends. And then maybe, you know, those five will tell someone. And then, hey, then that five becomes seven. And it becomes ten. And it becomes twelve. Then, wow, sometime it becomes fifty. Then the fifty, maybe some of them tell someone. And then that becomes a hundred. And it's like a seed. Give it water, 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 let it grow, and thanks to people out there, I mean, I've been lucky enough to talk with people back to the day on the Dip Pit Forum, and now did the, the Sausage Factory show with uh, Pizzow, and B-Movie Mike, and everybody on there, and Cole, and A lot of great guys on there, man. And that, and I think they're now called Region Free. And because I was able to keep at it, I was able to see Dead Pit come back. Where they were gone for a while, then they came back to the YouTube. And then, because I would post on my Facebook and post videos, then all of a sudden, hey, you want to do an alien commentary? Sure. So I did the alien commentary and then, you know, chatted with them on Instagram. And then now I'm lucky enough to frequently do their streams and hang out and talk with them and be friendly with them and call them my friends. And I got to meet Stuntman Mark and became friends with them. And doing YouTube, I got to have friends like Mike and Efri and Fabio. And they comment to me and then I watch their videos and I comment to them and then we talk. And then, oh, you're on Facebook. We'll talk on Facebook. So you socialize. I say, hey, how's it going? And you want to try this out? No, no biddy. Yes, cool. And I mean, I wish I could unleash the secret formula for you, but it kind of happened organically. I mean, I'm sure there are ways people could tell you the statistic way of creating a successful YouTube venture. And I'm, I don't consider myself successful. I'm just someone that a few people seem to like. People are kind enough to send requests. And I appreciate every single one of them for their kindness, including yours. And, uh, yeah, there's going to be bad times. But you got to have a, a thicker skin. You have to. Because here's what you do. You could delete the comment and block them and don't be ashamed of it. If they're being that much of a dick, that's what it's there for. You're not supposed to do it. That's why YouTube put it there for. I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. YouTube put it there for a reason. So you could do that. Or the fact of... Turn off your computer. Put your computer down. Go watch a movie. Go play a video game. Go out and play somewhere outside. Go to a mall. Well, malls don't exist. Go to a store. 
uh, play with your cats, play with your dolls, play with yourself, whatever you want to do. Ain't my prerogative. This the real world is still your real world. Doesn't matter that some random person says a nasty thing to you because it's always going to happen. I think people assume that if they're so nice and they're so sweet and they love every movie or they do this, they'll never be in their bubble and never be punctured. No. I don't care how nice you are. I don't care how hospitable you are on movies and stuff. There will always be someone. Stomach Mark is the nicest guy. Someone still, I kid you not, on a dead piss dream, comment said that they thought me and dead pit paid him, we, he pays us to be in our streams. Stum and Mark, you buy all this stuff, I bet you pay Matt and dead pit to be on your streams. And I went, I wish. I gave him crap for it. Oh, you owe me some money. And he laughed about it. And also that, oh, he's on dead pit for a diversity hire. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Stomach Mart is the nicest guy who never does a bad thing. And that's a perfect example. He did nothing wrong. And people, people will find a way to be a dick because it's the internet and they can get away with it. Just know that's a possibility. And once you know, they have no power over you. They say a nasty thing. You block them. You, you delete the comment. Or you move on. You turn off your computer. And you have your whole life right in front of you. To do whatever you need and want to do. Stuff you need to do. Stuff you want to do. Stuff to make your life keep going. Stuff to make your life fun. Whatever the case may be. Don't worry about people online. <clears throat> really don't it's going to take time maybe a bit of a I don't, luck in time that's really what it is and I guess determination to don't give up this is an easy notion to give up and I don't blame people it's like you know what I'm just going to do something else with my life. I can understand that. But if you really, really like it, and you really, really want it, don't give up. Because you never know what's around the corner. Of course, make sure that it doesn't hurt your life, doesn't hurt your livelihood. But, I mean, you because I met Pizzow, one day I got to do a stream with Cody Leach, who's a guy who has like 150,000 subscribers. Now, will me and Cody Leach probably ever talk to each other again? Probably not, because he's up there and I'm down there, but I got to have one stream. He was a nice guy, he was generous, we had a good conversation with Pizzow, and even if it never happens again, I still had that cool moment. And who knows, maybe a year from now or three months from now, something will happen. If not, no worries. If so, it was still a cool time. And I did that because I was asked. And it was seemed like it would be a cool time to talk about our favorite films, and it was. So there you go. It worked out. You never know what's going to happen next if you give up. But that's, of course, going to be your choice. As long as it's not hurting you financially, physically, emotionally, all that stuff. If you if you really can't handle it, there's no shame in throwing in the towel and just be like, you know what, I'm going to do this other stuff because it's healthier for my well-being. But if it's because someone's trying to drive you out, don't let them do it and tell them to piss up a rock. So... I'm here right now. Who knows what will happen in the future? Who knows? Because who knows how much we all have. I mean, hell, we don't know how long we'll live. So, you could be worried about as much as you want, but then you don't waste your time worrying about stuff. So, for everyone out there who wants to start a YouTube channel, there's a 
you just probably say at this point like billions of people it feels like if it's not it feels like there's billions of people on YouTube it's very very almost impossible nowadays to stand out that's why you can't look it up here I can see you want to drive up there and you could you know work social media and Twitter and Facebook if, if you really determine and don't give up on it and you two very well do it I just don't know how to do that stuff so I'm the wrong guy to ask on that like born to be Rad Garrett he knows how to do that stuff and he's really determined and he he works hard on it I just don't know how to do that stuff I'm, I'm too lazy I don't know <laughs> but uh I just thought that in the day uh, I'm lucky enough to have some friends, some fans who seem to like what I do, make a couple of videos that some people seem to like, and still here, knock on wood. And I guess we'll see what happens next. So thanks once again, man. Take care, everyone, and we'll see you guys down the road. Later.